What's up, everybody? Matt Gajeski here with the brand new Osmo Fantasy Football YouTube channel. And we are going to be discussing all things fantasy football heading up to the 2021 NFL season. Today, we're going to be talking dynasty and get into the top 12 quarterback rankings ahead of this season. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. But without further ado, let's dive into the top 12 quarterbacks. We will descend down the list, counting down to number one, starting with number 12. We'll be taking a look at Miami's Tua Tagovailoa entering his second season in the NFL, coming off what is largely regarded as a disappointment, but Miami still had a winning record, maybe in spite of Tagovailoa. But while some people have given up on him in the fantasy community, the Miami Dolphins certainly have not. Basically going all in this offseason on Tagovailoa and the Miami Dolphins offense, they add Will Fuller, they add Jalen Waddle with their first overall pick to complement Devontae Parker and Mike Jasicki. So he very much has the weapons in place now to take a step forward, not to mention they replace offensive coordinator, bring in Eric Sudsville and Eric George Bodsey. A couple of coordinators expected to utilize a lot of motion shifts, things like that to help get playmakers the ball in space, really help out the offense, similar to what Tagovailoa did at Alabama. But from a statistical perspective, Tagovailoa, he will need to take a step forward in order to pay off this number 12 ranking. He had just 181 passing yards per game last year, completing about 64% of his passes for 6.3 yards per attempt. All that leaves a little bit to be desired. Rushing yards per game, just 11 here. He's not going to be a major dual threat quarterback, but he's still very young. Again, second season, 23 years old. And with the playmakers in place around Tagovailoa, there's a lot to like as far as what he could do with a step forward. So he enters the list at number 12, not to mention this upcoming season, Miami's projected for nine and a half wins after they narrowly missed the playoffs last year. So Tagovailoa will be QB 12 in the dynasty rankings. Moving to number 11, one of the toughest players to rank in all of dynasty right now is Deshaun Watson. This is because of off field issues. Deshaun Watson still only in his fifth year, still 26 years old. Basically, has put together everything you want to see from a statistical perspective. Last year, averaged over 300 yards per game, completed over 70% of his passes, 8.9 yards per attempt. Those were all career best for Watson. Touchdown to interception ratio, 33 to 7, and he also adds a bit on the ground, 27.8 rushing yards per game. That's about three-fourths of a touchdown, which is something you always want to see from your quarterbacks. However, there are concerns with Watson, not just off the field concerns, but this Houston team is very much trending in the wrong direction. In back-to-back -back years now, they've lost DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. They're going into the season with Brandon Cooks as their top receiver. That's not ideal. They also have a win total projection of just four. They've traded away most of their draft picks, not only this past year, but in upcoming years as well. So the rebuild for Houston is going to take a little while. With that said, Watson has still been able to overcome a lot of these deficiencies. If he can get on the field, he will be immediately ascending this list. But right now he comes in at Dynasty quarterback 11, largely because of off-field concerns. Number 10, we have Trey Lance, rookie for the San Francisco 49ers, coming out of North Dakota State. He is just 22 years old. He is 6'4", 226 pounds and one of the most athletic quarterbacks immediately in the NFL. For the purposes of this video, we'll talk about his stats from the 2019 season at North Dakota State because North Dakota State only played one game last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But when we last saw Trey Lance on the field, the premier dual threat in college football, he passed for 174 yards per game, but he had a perfect 28 to 0 touchdown interception ratio, also completed nearly 67% of his passes, but they did not need to use him through the air. They could use him on the ground and really take advantage of this dual threat skill set. He averaged about 69 rushing yards per game. In total, he rushed for 1,100 yards on 169 attempts. Incredible efficiency from Trey Lance. In the 2020 game, we saw, again, just one game there. He also had 143 rushing yards and two scores. So we're talking about a Lamar Jackson level rusher on the ground. Now, with Trey Lance, the concerns will be how quickly does he get on the field? Again, they took him with the number three overall pick. So while Jimmy Garoppolo may start this year, Trey Lance is going to play sooner rather than later, and he gets the benefit of playing alongside Kyle Shanahan, who has been widely regarded as the quarterback whisperer throughout his career. Again, 
this 49ers team was just in the Super Bowl. And last year, they were ravaged by injuries. So it's very much still a great roster. He'll be throwing to George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, and they have a strong offensive line. They drafted Aaron Banks in the second round to complement an offensive line already containing Trent Williams, Alex Mack, and Mike McGlinchey, not to mention Lake and Tomlinson. So very good team overall. Trey Lance, as soon as he starts, walks into one of the best situations a rookie could possibly walk into. And again, just 22 years old. So for dynasty purposes, you want to hold this dual threat throughout his career as long as he can ascend. Quarterback nine. We have our second rookie. It is Clemson's Trevor Lawrence, of course, drafted with the number one overall pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, 22 years old. He is 6'6", 213 pounds. We saw him play 10 games last year for Clemson, missed a pair of games due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but he still averaged over 300 yards passing, completed 69% of his throws for 9.4 yards per attempt. He had a 24 to 5 touchdown to interception ratio. And sneaky rushing upside for Lawrence, he added 20 yards per game. That was actually a bit down from his previous season where he rushed for 563 total yards. So Lawrence does have a little bit of sneaky rushing upside, maybe in your Aaron Rodgers vein, coming mainly as a scrambler. But he enters an interesting system with Jacksonville. They changes, change coaches moving forward with Urban Meyer here, who has made a lot of questionable decisions this offseason, but taking Lawrence certainly was not one of them. And they upgrade their player personnel around Lawrence. To complement DJ Chark, they have last year's second-round pick, LaVisca Chenault, entering his second season. They signed Marvin Jones a savvy veteran from Detroit. They also return all of their offensive line and they add Walker Little, a second round pick coming out of Stanford to bolster that unit here. Not to mention they take his teammate in their first round with their second first round pick in Travis Etienne, an excellent pass catching back. So while Jacksonville still only projects for six and a half wins, that should be an offensive step forward after, you know, last year they were 30th in points per game. All these offensive weapons they were able to add does bode well for the Jaguars and they project for the fourth easiest strength of schedule this upcoming year. Again, Trevor Lawrence, just 22 years old, the best quarterback prospect maybe we've seen since Andrew Luck. There's a lot to like about him, and that's why he enters the top 10 of our dynasty quarterbacks. Number eight, we go to Seattle with Russell Wilson entering his 10th season in the NFL, still surprisingly just 33 years old, so a lot of tread left on these tires. He's 5'11", 215, has started 16 games. Every year of his career, last year he passed for 4,212. That was 263 per game. Completed nearly 69% of his passes. That was his career best. 7.5 yards per attempt, 40 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Fantastic ratio there. Not to mention the dual threat ability he provides. Finished with 513 rushing yards. That was 32 per game. Something you love to see out of Wilson. The reason he's a little lower on this list, it's not just the advanced age. 33 is not old by all means, but he's 10 years the senior of someone like Trevor Lawrence. So the ceiling may not be there as far as a career perspective, but Seattle has shown a willingness to embrace run first offense. And this has been a staple of Pete Carroll throughout his tenure with the Seahawks. They do bring in a new offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron. So it'll be interesting to see how this changes moving forward. But this has been Pete Carroll's mantra for a long time now fortunately we have russell wilson throwing to dk metcalf we have him throwing to tyler lockett they do add Dwayne eskridge on day two a curious pick as an older undersized special team mold type player but this offense has still improved Dwayne brown gabe jackson have been the big names on the offensive line an offensive line that has steadily gotten better and of course even with a run first approach russell wilson's been able to get it done with efficiency throughout his career they have the eighth easiest strength of schedule. They project for 10 wins as far as their win total this upcoming year. Still a lot to like about Russell Wilson and a lot left in the tank for this signal caller here. He is our eighth quarterback in Dynasty right now. Number seven, we move to Joe Burrow, second year pro for the Cincinnati Bengals coming out of LSU. Joe Burrow is a bit older as a prospect. He's 25 years old in his second season. He is coming off a major injury. He had the severe ACL tear this year, but rehab has been going well, according to all team reports. Should be ready to start the season, and he showed a lot as a rookie with Zach Taylor, Cincinnati Bengals. Passed for 2,688 yards. That was just shy of 270 per game. Completed 65% of his passes for 6.7 yards per attempt, which leaves a little bit to be desired 
But of course, this year they remove AJ Green and they add Jamar Chase to a receiving core already containing T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. So what should be an explosive offensive passing attack, not to mention Joe Mixon adept as a pass catcher and running back as well. From there, a 13 to 5 interception, touchdown to interception ratio. We are expecting some improvement just with the offensive weapons. And then the 14.2 rushing yards per game. He's not going to give you a lot on the ground, but he has scrambling ability, which is positive. His rushing ability is more similar to a Tua Tagovailoa. So a player like Joe Burrow very much does have to get it done through the air. Fortunately, the Cincinnati Bengals, at least when Burrow was healthy, passed at one of the highest rates per game and ran some of the most plays. They ranked 13th, and that was with a fairly inefficient offense. They still have Jonah Williams. They improved their offensive line. We're expecting a step forward. It may take a couple more years for the full rebuild in Cincinnati, but the steps forward they've made this year already bode well for Joe Burrow throughout his career. Again, just 25 years old, entering his second season in the NFL. Player number six, going to the top half. We have Justin Herbert, another second-year player, this time for the LA Chargers coming out of Oregon. He's just 23 years old, 6'6", 236, so one of the bigger body quarterbacks in the NFL. He ended up starting 13, excuse me, 15 games for the Chargers last year after that accident with Tyrod Taylor thrust him into action. But fortunately for the Chargers, they never had to look back after Justin Herbert started. He ended up passing for 289 yards per game, completed nearly 67% of his passes for 7.3 yards per attempt, 31 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions, and he was sneaky on the ground with some of his rushing ability. Averaged 15.6 per game, but was able to score some touchdowns. Because of his bigger size, he can be used on the goal line, similar to a Josh Allen, where you're using these QB sneaks because your quarterback is so big and durable. But Justin Herbert obviously showed a lot. The Chargers have a new coaching staff coming in. Joe Lombardi will be coordinating the offense, previously working with Drew Brees, so expecting a step forward there. They still have Keenan Allen. They still have Mike Williams. They have Jalen Guyton. A lot to like for receivers here. Their strength of schedule is 11th, but they still project for nine and a half wins. Overall, Justin Herbert, the big concerns are a sophomore step back. But so far, there's nothing to indicate that that will occur. And we have an L.A. team that also bolstered the offensive line this year. Justin Herbert was under pressure a lot as a rookie, but we're expecting that to drop a little bit this year, giving his receivers, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, a little bit more time to work. And again, just 23 years old in his second season after one of the best rookie seasons we've seen as a passer in recent years. Now we move into the top five. The true dynasty assets you want at quarterback. Number five is going to be Dak Prescott from the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, the injury shortened season last year, severe ankle injury, but he did play in five games. And what we saw from Prescott in those five games was no less than amazing. He's still 28 years old in his sixth season, so a lot of tread left on the tires. But in those five games, we saw Prescott average 371 passing yards per game, 68% completion percentage for 8.4 yards per attempt. He did have an interesting touchdown to interception ratio, nine touchdowns to five interceptions, but we'll expect some positive regression there. And he still has that dual threat ability, averaging just shy of 20 rushing yards per game. The step forward for Prescott was in part because of a couple reasons. First, the defense was very bad. Now, they did spend most of their draft picks, especially early draft capital, on the defensive side of the ball this year. But it was also in part to the C.D. Lamb draft pick. So they moved into last season with C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Mike Gallup in three wide sets. They returned those receivers. Also, they get back their offensive line. Last year, they dealt with injuries to Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, Zach Martin, along with some of their complementary players in the offensive line. They will all be back healthy. Kellen Moore had this offense humming, averaging over 30 points per game with a healthy Prescott and a healthy offensive line to start the year. So again, expecting maybe a little bit of regression. I don't know if Prescott will be able to average 371 yards per game. That's ridiculous. For reference, Mahomes averages about 315. But we're still expecting a very efficient offense from Dallas this year with Lamb, Cooper, and Gallup in place, a healthy offensive line, and a healthy Prescott overall. So he is still quarterback number five at 28 years old. Moving to number four. We start getting into the elite dual threat territory. We have Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals. 
He is just 24 years old, a little bit different build from some of the other signal callers we've seen on this list. He's smaller, just 5'10", 207 pounds, more in that Russell Wilson mold. But he still started 16 games last year. His stats are a little bit depressed after he suffered a debilitating shoulder injury in week 11 that he still ended up playing through. But Murray still averaged just shy of 250 passing yards per game, completed 67% of his passes for 7.1 yards per attempt. And what we really like about Murray is the dual threat upside. Unquestioned outside of maybe a Trey Lance among the players we've seen on this list so far. Kyler Murray averaged 51.2 rushing yards per game, finished with 819. He's a player that went over 1,000 yards rushing in his final season at Oklahoma. This team is very much adding pass catchers around Kyler Murray too. So they had DeAndre Hopkins last year. This year they bring in A.J. Green. They draft Rondale Moore. That is in addition to Christian Kirk, who's already been on the team for a few years. And this team runs more four wide receiver sets than any team in the NFL. They also lose Dan Arnold, who was a tight end, but functioned mainly as a big bodied tight end who would play in the slot on about half of his snaps. So they can move forward, hopefully, with Green, Moore, DeAndre Hopkins, and Christian Kirk in four wide sets. Not to mention, they upgrade the offensive line. DJ Humphreys was already excellent last year, but they trade for Rodney Hudson at center, which should bolster that unit hopefully keep Kyler Murray healthy and take a step forward this year. They do play in one of the toughest divisions in football, projecting for eight wins this year, but already they ranked third in plays per game. They were 25th in pass rate. That doesn't necessarily hurt Murray because of his rushing upside. There's a lot to like here for a player to take a step forward, still young in his career. Again, just 24 years old. Dynasty quarterback three. We have the player who took maybe the largest step forward last year, it is Buffalo's Josh Allen. He now enters his fourth season. He is 25 years old. Unlike Murray, he's going to be your bigger bodied quarterback. He's 6'5", 237 pounds. Started 16 games last year. But what we saw out of a passer from Josh Allen was no less than remarkable. Again, some of the biggest step forward we have ever seen a quarterback take in his career. He ended up passing for 4,544 yards. That was 284 per game. And his completion percentage jumped to 69.2%. For reference, the previous season, his completion percentage was 58.8. He was able to improve that by 10%, which is just dramatic. This was also carried over into yards per attempt, where he had 7.9, a 37 to 10 touchdown to interception ratio, and he still had the 421 yards on the ground. That was about 26.3, and he's shown upside for more. For reference, in his rookie season, he rushed for 631. His second season, 510, and last year, the 421. So there is still more upside for Josh Allen, a very adept scrambler, somebody they do like to use in the red zone as well, has at least eight touchdowns in each of his first three seasons with the Buffalo Bills. This is a team that adds Emmanuel Sanders. They retain their entire offensive line, and they keep their coaching staff intact. So there's really nothing to suggest a step back for Josh Allen. And of course, they have Stefan Diggs under contract. This offense already ranked third in points per game last year, just shy of 30. They now have the ninth easiest schedule, and they project for 11 wins. In an AFC East that is essentially wide open with New England rebuilding, Miami could take a step forward, but they still have Tua Tagovailoa under center, and of course the Jets. The Bills should be the favorite to win this division for years to come, and Josh Allen as QB3 makes a lot of sense here. Again, just 25 years old, so you'd love to get a quarterback with this upside this age and this projection moving forward as your dynasty starter. Quarterback two, now we get to some quarterbacks where there's just a little bit of nitpicking between them. No qualms if you have Josh Allen, number three, but number two for me is Baltimore's Lamar Jackson. Fourth season in the NFL, still a very young quarterback, just 24 years old for Jackson. He is the premier dual threat in the NFL. Last year, he started 15 games, passed for 2,757 yards, which was just shy of about 185 per game. Completed 64.4% of his passes for 7.3 yards per attempt. That was a bit of a step back from 2019, but still an efficient season overall for Jackson. And more importantly, he's now rushed for back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Last year, he puts up 1,005 rushing yards on the ground. That was 67 rushing yards per game. But Baltimore is an offense. They're going to function far different than any other offense because of Jackson. They pass at the lowest rate in football, which isn't necessarily bad for him. Because of his dual threat upside, they still run a decent amount of plays per game. Last year, they were 63, and they scored the ninth most points. This year, they showed an increased commitment in Jackson as a passer. They bring in Sammy Watkins in free agency. They also draft Rashad Bateman, 
rookie receiver out of Minnesota to help complement Marquise Brown, who maybe will be better in a complementary role in this offense. Their offensive line did undergo a lot of changes. They trade Orlando Brown to Kansas City, but they signed Alejandro Villanueva to replace him. That will complement their other tackle, Ronnie Stanley, who's played at an all-pro level through his career. Kevin Zeitler's on the interior. So their running game should be very much intact. And again, this is a team that projects for 11 wins this year. They have a very strong roster moving forward in an AFC North, which continues to evolve with ebbs and flows. Pittsburgh down a little bit, Cincinnati emerging, and Cleveland very much emerging, expecting to make the playoffs again this year. But a lot to like with Lamar Jackson, age, rushing upside, increased playmakers on offense in Bateman and Watkins coming in to complement their other receivers. Love Lamar Jackson as the quarterback, too. Getting to our final quarterback, our quarterback one, it is, of course, Patrick Mahomes, $100 million man entering his fifth season, only 26 years old, averaging 316 passing yards per game, completing 66.3% of his passes. That was a career best, 8.1 yards per attempt. He's never been below eight, 38 touchdowns to six interceptions. You really just can't say enough good things about Mahomes right now. Even active as a rusher, 20.5 rushing yards per game. That is going to give you the equivalent of half a passing touchdown through the air. Kansas City, they retain their entire coaching staff on offense. Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy. their pass rate is fifth highest in the NFL. Plays per game was eighth. Points per game, sixth. They project for 12 and a half wins this year. Their roster is very much intact. They lose Sammy Watkins, but they retain Travis Kelsey. They retain Tyreek Hill, expecting a step forward from players like Nicole Hardman. Their offensive line is vastly different, but that actually doesn't make a big difference. I think here they lose Eric Fisher, Mitchell Schwartz, Kalesha Osemele, among others, but they bring in a lot of great players to replace these. They trade a first for Orlando Brown from Baltimore. They side Joe Tooney and Austin Blythe. They also get Laurent Duvernay-Tardif backed after he opted out last year, and that leaves Mike Remmers as their lone starter, a very solid offensive line unit. Maybe it takes a little bit of time for those players to gel, but those are all above average players on the offensive line. Of course, you have Patrick Holmes also displaying this efficiency for multiple seasons now, still retains his top two pass catchers. This is why he remains dynasty quarterback number one, still just 26 years old. To recap, here's the list of our top quarterbacks for dynasty in order, starting with Tua Tagovailoa at 12, working our way all the down, all the way down to Patrick Mahomes at number one. But that will do it for us at Osmo.com. Of course, I am Matt Gajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. Before we head out of here, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. We're going to have all sorts of fantasy football content, not just Dynasty. We'll have redraft, mock drafts, best ball drafts, player breakdowns, everything you can imagine. So make sure to stick around and check back on the channel for future videos. We will catch you next time. Bye.